Mm. What's going on, everybody? Oh. Trying to figure out how to get a better angle here. There we go. What's going on on this wonderful Thursday evening? It's been a while. Figured it was time to hit another video up. All right. Uh, got kind of a double-sided subject tonight. Um, something I've kind of touched on in other videos about checking piston clearances and valve clearances and all, but I've never actually shown, you know, how it's done. Um, and just like always, this is irritating me. And just like always, you know, just this is the way that I've been taught to do it and the way that I do it that doesn't make it the absolute way to do it. Um, you know, if you've been doing things the other ways, I mean, getting by with it, then, then, <laughs> yeah, just put Play-Doh in it, rotate it a few times, not hard, yeah, well, that's what I was getting to, uh, that's the way that a lot of people does, the, the valve, the piston checks and all, um, that, that way is not as accurate as, as some people think it is, um, that's not the way I do it, um, I don't do, putty in the cylinder you have to take the head on and off on and off and you know then you go through you know compressing head gaskets and and then your gaskets could could fail down the road but I do it with um with with gauges um, I'm gonna show you how to do it with the putty and also show you how to do it with the gauges um also checking checking piston to head clearance um is is something that a lot of people fail to do um they don't understand uh you know, uh, a rod stretch, crankshaft flex, piston rock, that these clearances close up and there's a reason why we want um, a certain amount of uh, piston to head clearance or piston to valve clearance it's because of stretch and and piston rock and stuff like that. But anyway, I'll kind of go ahead and get started here because this might be a little lengthy uh, with all the things I had to explain. But um, let's see here. All right. First and foremost, nice flywheel, huh? Uh, this engine here is just a standard clone engine. Um, I've put a Honda flat top piston in it. There we go, maybe it won't fall there. I put a Honda flat top piston in it, you know, it's a standard BSP block. Uh, stock rod, stock crankshaft, nothing special other than the flat top piston. Um, I do this because a lot of people run these pistons and this is the type of piston they have problems with. Now I'm going to do this with a standard clone head and also a Hemi head to show you why it's really important even more on the Hemi. Alright, the first thing you do when measuring piston to head clearance. You're, you're trying to gauge the distance between the piston at top dead center, which is with it all the way to the top, and I showed you a while back how to find that. Um, in, in the tech room, this is one of our flywheel pullers. I just took the bolts out of it, and you can use it um, as a gauge here to find your find how far in the hole your piston is, because when you go to go to uh, calculating your piston to head clearance, you need to know how far in the hole the piston is at top dead center. And then you calculate uh, how deep the head is in between the valves. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm CCing now. I, I really got off. All you want to know is how deep in the hole the piston is and how thick the head gasket is. That's how piston head clearance is. Nothing to measure but how far in the hole it is and how thick the gasket is. But 
this is something like what they would use in the tech room to check for pop out in the in the piston make sure you have zero pop out like akra nka style engines modifieds that don't matter um but with these type of engines um they measure with in line with the wrist pin what we're going to be measuring we're going to be measuring against the wrist pin we want to have exact top and exact bottom so one thing you can do is put one of these on there and make sure that there's no pop out to begin with if you got pop out then you got a you know a whole nother problem but a way you can measure the end of hole is with one of these and a feeler gauge something you got to keep in mind though even with rings on this piston this engine has not been honed this is just right out the box i threw a flat top in it but as you see even with factory clearances on it the piston can rock at top dead center you get a little bit of up and down movement this one doesn't do it a lot because like i say this has got very tight clearances on it. but when you set these clearances at you know four or five or six thousand whatever you set your skirt clearance to that's going to make that piston wobble a little bit worse and when you're measuring your end of hole you want to measure the most important part is the very top because when the piston comes to the top on the exhaust stroke there's nothing there to hold the piston you know, on the compression stroke and the intake stroke there's stuff holding the piston in place but on the on the exhaust stroke there's nothing up there to stop the piston is pushing the exhaust gases out so the only thing that stops it is the rod and when that happens the piston whenever it starts to come back down the top of it will rock forward and that's why it's important to know how much rock your piston's got because you want to find top dead center and rock the piston down you want to push it down so that makes the top stick out as far as it can you find your top dead center you can lay your gauge up here and then take a feeler gauge and run in behind it you know you want to kind of hold down the bottom of the piston a little bit run a gauge in and out until you find one that that, that drags well and whenever i find what i think it is i add a thousandth to it so if you're doing this you got your piston at top dead zero you're running your gauges in and it says ten thousandths i always say 11. it's always better to have a little bit more or you know add some to it that gives you a little extra room down the road all right you've got a top dead center you got your gauge in there you rocked your piston back so that you know you, you know it's tilted forward as much as it can we're, we're going to go with an even number of 10 you got it's 10 thousandths in the hole all right and then all you do to find your piston to head clearance is add the thickness of the gasket these gaskets range from nine to ten thousandths so i go with nine I always add one and subtract one if I'm not sure. Now you can measure them with, you know, dial calibers and all, but I always average this one out to be nine thousandths. So if we're ten here and we're nine here, that's only nineteen thousandths piston to head clearance. In my opinion, that is not enough. Um, stockers, modified engines, the rule of thumb is thirty thousandths. Um, that's the absolute minimum with modified style engines it's going to be turning 75 8000 8500 you get as your rod begins to wear you get you know your clearances close up you get more crankshaft flex you get block flex higher rpms 30000 is an absolute minimum typically i try to shoot for 35 to 40 in modified high rpm engines now stockers i've gotten away with 20000 um that is the absolute minimum i will go i still try to shoot for 25 or more um but what i would do in this situation there's only 19 if this was a you know an akra nka style engine um i would cut the head down to get my cc's where i want so i can run two of these gaskets and that would give me 18 plus 10 that's 28 that would be sufficient piston to head clearance in just about any type of application but that's all piston to head clearance is is how far the hole your piston is plus the thickness of your gasket it's that simple there's no other equations to do no math no liquid no nothing that's all it is now i measure my end of hole with one of these gauges um I, I do all my head checking my cc's and all this stuff this is what i use because with this i can run it across the top and you know find where i'm at and then rock the piston with my finger you know and i can get an absolute you know a much more accurate 
measurement with this than I can, you know, with the feeler gauge and the block. But I've done it this way for years and never had a problem with it. Um, let's see, but that's, that's, that's all piston head clearance is. Quick, easy, simple. Can be done with a, a nice, make sure it's something that's very flat. You don't want something that bends. You know, one of our flywheel pullers works great. It's flat, it's square, um, it ain't gonna bend with you, and it can be a multi-use tool. You can pull flywheels with it, or you can use it to check your pop out or in the hole with. Now, the fun part was checking piston to valve clearance. Now, when I came on, there was quite a few people that would mention putty. You know, I know people that use uh, bread and water. They, they take regular white sandwich bread and put water on it, mix it up, and they check their clearances with that. It works. Um, not usually what I like to do, but I like to use some type of actual, this is, you know, an automotive style type putty that usually don't dry out. It's been sitting on my desk for years and it never dried out. Um, but simple, all you do is you just spread the putty out, you put it on top of your piston. You know, I use to make the shape of the piston. Get it good and as level as you can, nice and level. Put the head gasket on it. You put the head on it. Uh, you, you know, set the valve lash at zero. You rotate the engine around and the valves are gonna move down and you're gonna see every area, you know, that the valve gets close to the piston. Then you can measure your putty and that gives you an idea of how close your piston is to your valve. Now this engine, I lied to you at first, this engine has a flat top piston and I put a 308 cam in it. I wanted a high lift cam in it to do this piston to valve check. But with a standard clone or non-hemi predator head, uh, this is just a standard head. I put stainless valves in it with keepers. It's got stock valve springs on it so they're easy to move. Nothing special here. Um, but with this type of head, the valves go pretty much perpendicular straight up and down with the piston. So piston to head clearance is not a big of issue on these type of heads, you know, unless you get into some extreme, you know, lift cams, you know, 450, 500, 550, um, because the piston and valves go pretty much straight up and down, you know, with, with the piston, so they don't close up as much, but you still need to check them. Um, so I'm going to show you the way I do it with the gauges. Um, this is going to take a, a minute or two. I got a standard, you know, same 9,000s gasket here. Yeah, this, this is just the way I was taught to do it um, with gauges. The putty thing works great, you know. You, you, it's about the same amount of time to do it either way. Um, I just, it's just the way I've always done it. And, not the proper way to put a head on but we're just doing a show tonight no big deal all right what i do i'll use the standard this is what comes in the tech kit this is what i used here a while back to show everybody how to you know set lift and lash and all on their uh akra style engines well i might need to put the rockers on first while i put this on <laughs> getting a little ahead of myself yeah this is a yeah, Chad, this is the my Booms Tire Service shirt. People send me t-shirts, I wear them. Um, but what he don't know is, in order for me to wear the shirt on my show, is he's got to write me a $500 check next time I see him. So um, that's something I don't tell nobody until after I wear it. So, surprise! <laughs> something else I'm going to show you while I'm here that I got into last time that I got a lot of questions about was was rocker angle and this is I've got two different size push rods here I got a standard length push rod that I just dropped in the block and can't get out now and I don't have any pliers in here I got a standard length uh, push rod and I've got one of the short chrome ollies now these are one to three ratio roller tip rockers the reason I use these tonight instead of, you know, the really nice, nice shaft-mounted true roller gauge rockers is it's easier to show you rocker angle with these than it is the gauges because of the way they're built. You know, they, they've got a lot of nice bulk to them. 
you know, to keep flex down and stuff like that. These are skinny and look like a stock rocker, so it's much easier to show you rocker angle with these than it is the uh, gauges. All right, let's see. Leaving some stuff off here. Like I say, I got stainless valves on here. And it's just stock springs, nothing special on there so that you know, they're easy, it's easy to move around and ain't got a lot of drag on it. Yeah. All right, set everything at zero lash. Forgot to put my lash cap on this side. All right, like I say, these are the little one to three NR roller tip rockers. And what I'm gonna do. First thing is first is I'm gonna show you different rocker angles. Now, the stock rocker, the stock push rod is on this side, the short one is on this side. Maybe this can give you all a little, a slight indication on different rocker angles. All right, you see how the, this is hard to do while I'm holding it. This rocker here on this side has got the shorter push rod in it. You see how that rocker is kind of tilted down at the back there? With higher lift cams, roller rockers and stuff, that is a more preferred angle to me than the other one is. The other one is sitting a little straight. And as a possibility, this rocker, because it is 308 cam on this side, because it's got the standard length push rod, could bottom out on the stud. Now, I went over this a couple videos ago about them bottoming out on the stud. Um, these rockers are supposed to be machined so that that doesn't happen, but with a 308 cam, and these are one to three rockers, that puts us at around 408 lift. It's a lot of lift. And that's gonna just about bottom that sucker out with lift. Now, that's a lot of lift there. I would not run this combination with these type of rockers. That's just, I think it's too much on it. I would put a set of gauges on it because you're gonna have to have some pretty good springs on there. But that just kind of shows you the different rocker angles. You know, what's preferred, which is this side, got that slight downward on the push rod side. And this side sits a little more straight. All right. We're gonna pretend like everything is Bolt it down good and tight. We're gonna put our man. It's quiet in here. Odd them being in there and it being that quiet. Usually you hear him jumping around. He must be asleep or something. All right. Now. What I do is I just go just like I'm gonna check lift. I make sure that both my valves are closed, past the compression release. Ah, right, this is gonna be kinda of hard to do like this. As always, I'm doing things backwards than what I normally do. Oh, right, we're gonna zero out our gauge. I'm just gonna show you the lift on this thing. 308 and 1 to 3, that's 1, 2, 3, 407, 407,000, around 408. All right, now to check the piston to valve clearance, you kind of need the pit, the the, the uh, carburetor off and the exhaust off, just like it sits here, spark plug out so you can see everything moving up and down. All right, now if you shine a light down in through the spark plug hole, um, as the piston comes up, you know, spin the engine around a few times and watch how everything works in, in coordination with the piston. Because when the intake valve begins to open, the piston is still coming up and the intake valve begins to open. That's where you have your problem is at because if the intake valve has got too light a spring on it, when it comes up, it'll bounce. And everything's happening so fast that when that intake valve bounces, the piston could already be back up to the top and that's, that's where it hit when you float a valve. 
Uh, the piston's almost back up, and watch our gauge. The, the valve's opening, and the piston is about just past three quarters of the way up. I see the piston is still coming up. You see the gauge move? That's a, that's a lot of movement because this is a big cam with ratio rockers. All right. Typically what I do is right about the time the piston gets to top dead center, I'll re-zero my scale and use some type of screwdriver or pry bar. This is the wrong one. I should have brought the other one in. We might can use this. This is why I put stock springs on it also. I can do this with my hands. All right. Like I say, as the engine rotates, you want to go as it rotates. And right before the piston gets top dead center, I zero everything out. And I move down to see. As it's right as it starts to open. Just as it starts to open. Right. And see how far down my valve goes, and you have to hold the flywheel. All right, right there, I've got a hundred thousandths. Got a hundred and twenty right there. And then get to the very top. Got ninety. Wow, this cam got a lot of all duration on it. So like I said, I, I've got a, it's a flat screwdriver. You just stick it under the back of it and pick it right up. And you can just sit here and, and watch the gauge go back and forth. All right, but we've got, we've got over 100 thousands right there. So we're good on this. And like I say, this is also... Right there. About 100 and, 110 And usually, when you find a spot that hits... If you'll hold the gauge down and rotate the engine, you'll see it move. Dang it is, screwdriver. All these tools I bring in here and I always forget something. Ha, there we go. All right, right there we're hitting. If you rotate the engine, then you see it moving as you rotate the engine. And that gives you the, the smallest clearance right there. And we've got over a hundred thousandths on this, so we're good on it. And um, like I say, these, these, these clone style heads, you're gonna have a lot more clearance there unless you're running real extreme cans. We've got over a hundred thousandths here. And the minimum that I like to see on piston to valve clearance is, you know, is, is around 80. Some people say 60, but I don't like to go below 80 if I can help it. Um, now, I'm not going to do the exhaust side because, you know, it's, I, I wanted to really do the Hemi head, you know, instead of this one. But I just wanted to show that, you know, these, these, these type of engines here, these type of heads, uh, you know, you can, you can put a pretty good size cam and rockers in here, a lot of lift. You know, you can usually do somewhere around 425, 430. Before you get into any real problem with a flat top piston, if you're using a dish, depending on the valve size, a lot of times you can you can use less. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the Hemi head on it so that we can really get into some some short areas because the Hemi head is one that a lot of people mess up on. Because this hemi head that I got has been cut down 50 thousandths, and we're going to be using a really small head gasket on it.
like I say, this head's been cut down so much that we got into the fin. Um, it's been cut down, I'm wanting to say a little over 50 thousandths. It's been a while since I cut this head. Um, I was going to pour it and put big valves in it, but something else come up and I never got to it. So it's just been sitting there. All right, now, as far as the Hemi head and rockers, the only aftermarket rockers that you know that we carry are the the NR uh, one to two roller tip rockers. Real good rocker, um, but I've only got one. We're actually out of them on the shelf, and this is the only one I had sitting over on my table, so I just brought it. We're going to start on the intake side. And anytime you're using, like in another video I've done with these, these uh, roller tip rockers for the Hemi, it's always best to go ahead and get the standard length chrome ollie or go ahead and get the shorter length chrome ollie, especially if you cut the head a lot. Um, but a lot of people don't cut the head a whole lot on these Hemis. So we uh, just recommend the standard length. Right, see if I can get this in there without having to take the what you call it out. Alright. Run it down to zero. Zero lash. Roll around, make sure we're where we need to be. And we're not. See there? It really helps to get the right tools before you come in here and do stuff like this. I thought I had everything. I've been outside cleaning up my car. I raced last week and hadn't had a chance to clean it up all week. So I went out there and done it real quick and had to rush to get in here and it left half the stuff I needed out, outside. All right. Zero lash. Now, I say this is a 308 cam with one to two roller rockers. And the piston is hitting the valve right now. The problem with the Hemi head, as I've gone over several times, um, the valves are angled. They go in at an angle um, toward the piston. They don't go straight up and down with the piston. They go in at an angle. And the bigger the valve you got, the, the less room you have for piston to valve clearance because the valve is angled. Now, the Hemi head comes standard with a 27 intake in it. A lot of people put 28s. They put 30s. And you go to bigger valves like that, it, ten, it, 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 it closes up your piston to valve area. And like I say, this, this head here has been cut around 50 thousandths and we've got a 10 thousandths head gasket on it which just moved down a lot closer than it normally would be um i've got a thicker gasket here you know the hemi gasket but um i wanted to do it as close as possible to show you that you run out of room really quick with these hemi heads and this thing is set at zero lash and as the piston uh oh what's handed has some lighting go out or something as the is hitting here the piston is hitting the valve now and i ain't got to check that one <laughs> wow solid as a rock <laughs> and that's just cutting 50 thousandths off the head with a stock valve and a 10 thousandths head gasket um now with the hemi head because of the way the valves are canned angled you know sam you're correct you, know, you can look in the ports and look down the in the spark plug hole and see where your valve and all is at. Um, now, with something like this, you know, with it, if it almost is hitting the piston, you know, this is one of the reasons with these canned heads I don't like using putty. Um, with the regular head valves, it's going to go down, it's going to put you a nice imprint in the putty. But with these Hemis, it can be, it, it can, it, it, it can skew the result because it's going down at an angle and it'll roll the putty and 
then when the valve comes up, the putty kind of goes back together, and you'll get a measurement of, you know, 60,000s. You're like, well, we'll put another 10,000 head gasket on it. We'll be fine. And you'll actually be 20 or 30 from the piston because of the way the valve angle is. It messes up the results. And this is the main reason I like using the gauges. Um, that one's not even worth worrying because it's hitting the dang piston now. Um, so I'm just going to knock it over to the other side real quick. I honestly hadn't even checked this prior to being here. Usually I, I did check the other one at the shop just to kind of set my stuff up, but um, I didn't check this side. and It's hitting, which is going to save a lot of time. Good. Now usually, on these Hemi heads, you would not even try to run a 308 and one to two rockers without cutting the valve spring pockets um, because these springs are about 10,000 from coil binding right now. All right. Now, you can't use this bracket on the Hemi head. So I've got one of the old easy bore brackets that we used to use on the flat heads, modified it to work on the Hemi. It ain't perfect, but it works. I think the first Hemi engine I ever done, when these things first come in, I done it with the clay and wound up still getting piston to valve contact. And it wasn't even a very big camera, it was like a F275, I just didn't have very good springs in it. And I run it a little while and the engine just kind of slowed down because the valves were hitting the piston and it bent the valves and caused them to come unsealed. And uh, But that's when I learned to go back to doing it the way you spoke, the way you was taught to do it. I'm not saying it's the right way, but just the way I was taught to do it. So all right. Now, once you get all that locked down in place, and there's people out there that's got brackets for these. I think uh, Lewis Stout may have them. I'm not sure, but. This is what I made, no big deal. Um, on the exhaust side, especially with the Hemi, you can look in the exhaust port and see the piston coming up as the valve is starting. And the piston comes up really quick in these, these big lift cams with ratio rockers. And just before the piston, and you can see it all clearly in there, just before the piston stops, you'll see the piston stop and the valve move a little bit. You just kind of stop it in that area and go back to what we've done a while ago zero it out now this ain't got to be perfect you're just using this for a reference you know because once you feel it hit wow hear it hitting that's all the piston of valve clearance we got right here right there is 18 thousandths right there that's nowhere near enough. Even with the best springs, that could possibly hit. Now, like I say, once I find that spot right there with 18 thousandths, I hold it up on the piston and move the piston back and forth. You see, it goes even less. We've got about 12 thousandths clearance right here, piston to valve clearance right there. Yep, just that simple. You know, it, it may take a time or two to be looking down the ports and looking down the, the, the spark plug hole to figure out where the piston and the valve needs to be in reference to making your measurements. Um, but with the, exotic, the, the Hemi head, like I say, the way the, the valves are angled and can, you can see in there really good and you can actually see the piston coming up and down a lot better than you can in the standard clone style head. And um, I don't know, you, you, you wouldn't be able to see it on the camera. But um, like I say, we got. We got 12,000 pistons of valve clearance on this engine. Now, I can put 
this thicker gasket on it. Um, the gasket that's on it is 9,000. This one averages about 40 when it's compressed. You know, so that'll, that'll add a little more piston to valve clearance to it and also more piston to head clearance. But with these Hemi style engines, you know, I, I, I cringe below 80 thousandths. I, I shoot for 100 thousandths. Um, and in this case right here, if I wanted to run this setup, um, I would have to take the piston back out and fly cut the piston. It's always a good idea anytime you're building one of these Hemi's, if you're going to run something bigger than a Mod 2 cam in it, um, go ahead and have the piston fly cut. There's a lot of people out there that sell pistons that's fly cut. Man just popped up right there, Jeremy Parsons. He's got pistons for these Hemi's and, and, and uh, Predator engines on his shelf, I believe, that's already been fly cut. Um, there's a lot of people out there that's got them. It's best to go ahead and get it you know fly cut or do it yourself you know um you, you can buy a piston and figure out where to fly cut it and do it on a mill and you know, just have that one piston and then do all your pistons you know but there's people out there that's got them it's best to go ahead and do it especially especially if you're going to be putting in a bigger intake valve because a lot of people i'd usually try to run around a 28 on the hemis that's usually as big as i go because of problems like this now i usually don't run a cam this big in them typically um you know, I'll run, you know, a, a, a 308 with one-to-one -one rockers, or I'll go to an F275 with these one-to-twos, but you got to put up some big springs on it, you know, for the F275. Um, but I, I don't go below 100,000 on either side. Um, typically, unless I'm stroking it, um, I'll go ahead and fly cut the piston and be done with it. And you don't have to worry about, you know, do you have enough? Are you too close? Um, did you measure right? Um elaborate fly cut piston how about instead of elaborate and i just show you what it is um fly cutting the piston um is just a term for cutting valve reliefs in the piston um you've seen pistons that have look like little smiley faces in them that's so that you cut the piston out you recess a hole in the piston so that the valve goes down into it, it gives you a whole bunch more um Clearancing. Just throw it on the floor. The floor never misses. You drop something, throw something, it never misses. Uh, fly cutting a piston would be a flat top, you know, because you don't really want to do too much cutting on a dish piston. A lot of times the dish piston, you know, they're concaved anyway. And um, you would see areas like right in here and like right in here, yeah, they'd have areas cut out. That's not centered. I just drew that. <laughs> but anyway, it would be cut out of the piston so that the valve, when it goes down at an angle, would go in that hole and give you whatever depth of you know you cut typically people cut around 50 thousandths that gives you 50 thousandths more piston to valve clearance and so they're called eyebrows they're called you know recesses of uh, you know valve reliefs fly cut there's all kind of terminology out here for this kind of stuff you know but it all means the same thing it's opening up the piston to valve clearance you know for these type of heads that are um you know that are okay. But um, see how the valves go in at an angle? Yeah, I know a lot of y'all have seen Hemi heads. I know that's nothing new to y'all. Um, but you know, it, it's, it's really important to, to get your piston to valve clearance right um, on these Hemi heads. I mean, I've seen stock engines uh, with some of these you know, Predators that we run around here, like in the box stock class. You know, nothing around here is box stock, but you know, we'll run CL2 cams, you know, CL1 cams, BSP cams, whatever, and 10.8 springs, that's all they allow us to run. And um, I've seen some of these stock engines that's been tore apart, and the valves have been hitting the piston because we float them so hard that, you know, they're just, just everything's running out of space, and, and the valves are hitting the piston. I told you, I've been outside cleaning it up. I'm kind of sweaty. But um, I've seen that on stock engines. So, you know, on modified engines, um, you know, you're going to get bigger cams. Um, people, 
try to run, you know, 26 pound springs with really big cams and they'll get a little bit of float on the top end. And, you know, in one of the clone heads and the old style Predator heads, float is bad, but it's not as bad as it is with a Hemi. Um, because as you see, I just showed you how close it is. You know, heads cut down 50,000, 10,000 head gasket, 308, one to twos, and the valves hitting the piston, just rotating the engine around. Um, some people would have fired this up. They, they'd have rotated it around and wouldn't have felt that little bitty bump. Um, <laughs> yeah, Chad. As the old saying goes from uh, Days of Thunder, there's nothing stock about a stock predator. <laughs> you of all people should know that. <laughs> but, uh, dang it, man. You may forget what I was going to say. Um... Thanks, Chad. Oh, with the 308 and these big rockers, a lot of times I'll preload the valve just a little bit when I'm doing my measurements to give me that extra thousands or two. Um, because if that was set at, if it was set at exactly zero lash, you might not have felt that bump as I was turning it over. I mean, I barely, barely felt it on the on the intake side and. Somebody might have fired that engine up, and that thing, it would have probably run fine until they revved it up and floated the valve one time, and the valve would have hit the piston and probably broke the head of the valve off because the valve hits the piston at an angle that's going to snap the head of it off and get caught up in there and blow up, and then, you know, people start complaining about parts. Um, you know, there's, there's, in this business, there's no bad parts. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that make parts. I mean, we're not the only people that make parts. You know, like I said, Parsons up for like Jeremy Parsons, Bullfrog Motorsports makes you know they got some really good stuff. I use some of their stuff. Their big block stuff, great stuff. There's no bad parts out there, you know. But if they're not used correctly, none of them will will work long. Um, I don't know where Landon is. Y'all, you like the fifth person to ask about Landon. You know, Landon don't do this show. I do this show. Okay, Landon is my guest. I'm not his. <laughs> you know, I think he's getting a bad. He'll come running through here naked in a minute. But um, y'all just y'all just wait. Um, but like I said, kind of run through that, you know, especially with the the clone head. Um, there's not really much to show you on the clone. I really wanted to get into the Hemi to show you that these big cams. You know, I get people all the time. But you know, I got a 356, you know, with one to two rockers, you know, on my uh, on my uh Hemi Predator. The cat's up here. Get out. Got too much stuff up here to be able to play around. Now he's going to play with a pin out there with him, stupid cat. But you got to check this stuff, man. You got, you got these Hemis, a lot of really uh, close area in there because of the the way the valves are. Good God, I got a lot of questions. All right, let's see. Let me go through some of these questions here, y'all. No, it's not happy juice in the red cup. Happy juice is clear. Conies and chili fries. That sounds good. Oh, these ain't a whole lot of questions here. It's just, uh, oh, I got a first time watcher here. Hi, how you doing? Sorry I'm not better looking. Ohio. Piss in the... Piston the cylinder should be measured. Piston the cylinder should be measured if it's that much of a problem. Oh, I get it. you're talking about the piston rock. The reason I mentioned the, the higher um, clearancing on the piston rock is a lot of people don't have tools to measure the bore size. Um, a lot of people still measure bore sizes with, with these right here, uh, feeler gauges. Y'all asked for him? Here he is. You. you made a cake for me. I gotta see this. Oh my goodness! Yeah, my birthday was last weekend. He brought me a cake that he made of DVDs. You gotta blow the candle out. Get up here and let everybody see you. Come here. He just got out the tub. No, you gonna, no. You gonna sing happy birthday to me? Happy birthday! I gotta blow the candles out. <gasps> How about that? Blow it. Is that better? I get a birthday spanking. Oh, hold on, let me set my cake right here, cause I got to show everybody something else. Not only do I have a boom shirt on, so does he. Look at here. He's got one too. 
Okay. Say Monster House. Monster House. Is that what you're watching? Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, Tell me not not joke. Tell me not not joke. Who's there? No, you say not not. No, you say not not. Who's there? Not <laughs> Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting cow. <laughs> Interrupting cow. <Woo>. Interrupting cow. <laughs> he he he's been watching movies the past few days. Oh, right, well, can I? Do you want that push rod? Huh? It's got cat hair. Because <laughs> the cat's laying right there. That's why. That's why. That's why. I right, tell everybody bye. Bye. Say, yeah. See y'all later. See y'all later. See you later, alligator. See you later, alligator. Can you say it any louder than that? Because you about busting my eardrum out. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's funny? Uh, Taste. All right. All right. Is that cake good? <laughs> that is good. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. All right. Give, give everybody a doofus. All right. <laughs> okay. Muscle man. Thank you, baby. Ow. I like the cake. I'll treasure it forever. Treasure? Yeah. Do you want it? But you like treasure hunting. That's right. Treasure hunting. They're going on a treasure hunt. Oh. All right, good deal. Okay. Well, he said treasure up to <laughs> All right, back to it. Well, like I say, in the cylinder of piston wall, a lot of people still measure it with feeler gauges, which, you know, nothing wrong with that. Um, but, you know, measuring it with an actual dial bore gauge and stuff is, is a lot more accurate. Um, and people rebuild engines several times, especially modifieds, you know, with the single ring wise cut you have to go through several rebuilds and the clearances open up on them because a lot of people use dingleberry hones and or ball hones flex hones whatever you want to call them and the clearances open up and they're up around you know six seven thousand before they know it and they get a little extra rock but i just always like to mention the rock of the piston when i'm telling people to to check for piston the head clearance um, because that that plays a big role because if you push the top of the piston down you know you're looking at you know five eight thousandths sometimes possibly 10, I don't know if it go quite that much, but a good five, eight thousandths of when you push the piston down of extra measurement there that you're assuming the piston is that far in the hole. And then when it rocks, you lose a little bit. And if you're trying to cut it really close and you're trying to do it around 20 and you lost eight because of the piston rock, then you're too close and the piston winds up touching the head, which sends harmonics through the rod, which eats up the bearing or eats up the rod. The clearance is opened up down there and then the rod winds up breaking. Yeah. That is one of the reasons that connecting rods break. Billet rods and stock rods. When that piston touches that head, even if it's barely kissing it, it is sending harmonics down through that connecting rod into the journal and causing it to wear a little bit faster. And when those clearances open up, then you get what's called hammering, and that winds up breaking the rod. But that's why I mentioned the, the piston cylinder clearances and about rock and all. So much more advanced than other live shows. Yeah, I don't know about that. I'm, I don't consider myself advanced, but thank you anyway. Stalkers. Dave Chisholm, you are my stalker. No, stock steel rods don't stretch as much as aluminum, but they put more pressure on crankshafts and wrist pins, especially in small engines, which will create a little more stretch there. But yeah, you're right as far as that. Death micrometer, yeah. Play-Doh. I was actually going to use some of my son's Play-Doh, but he left the top off all of it, and most of it dried out, and I didn't feel like sitting in here kneading it with water, so I just... Uh... <laughs> Jason, I know that you and Dave Chisholm ain't going to waste no bread to put in an engine, but <laughs> I remember years ago, I honestly don't remember who told me, Somebody here locally used to run late models with us. Um, they were putting an engine together, and they didn't have any Play-Doh. They didn't have any, any, um, any, any, any actual clay to use. And dude was eating a sandwich. He took the 
piece of a sandwich off, dipped it in the soda, watered it up, and put it in his engine. And that's how they checked their clearances and went and won several races with it. I mean, they knew what they were doing. You know, they, they knew how to check proper clearances and all, you know, like with the putty and all they real experience with it. So, you know, hey, whatever works, you know. <laughs> Y'all quit talking about my wrenches. I do the best I can. No, this show is not weekly. Um, we're lucky to do it monthly. Um. <laughs> no, this is not the Predator engine I won last Friday night with. That engine got claimed. Somebody else has got that engine. I wish him luck with it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I went and raced last Friday night and actually won a race, so there's people giving me crap about it. Man, there's a lot of stuff on here. Okay. Uh, the rest of this is just people messing with me. Roll Tide. Man, you don't come up on my show talking about some Roll Tide. Go roll some Tide in your washing machine and wash some clothes. Oh my God, George Owenby was watching me. Yee. Talking about pressure. So, one of my... I wouldn't call you mentors, but one of my idols when it comes to building engines. Um, that's one of the very few people that, that, that when they start talking, I'll put my hand over my wife's mouth to shut her up to listen to him. Thanks for watching, Mr. Owenby. Can I get your autograph? All right, let's see. Yeah, we're back down to... Wow, there's a lot of people. All right, I'm going to go back and look at all these. I just can't sit here. Yeah, uh, Rick, Keith, we got plenty of ARC stickers. Call us up. Call 800 number tomorrow, 800-521-3560, or the shop line, whatever, and we can get you some stickers sent out. You know, yeah, that's $1,000 there. That's two shirts. That's right. That's two checks. I need one from... James and one from Daniel. Yeah, I need to just let, I guess let my kids start doing this show because he seems to get more reaction than, um, who builds the best Hemi for a stock appearing class? Uh, oh, somebody, somebody's going to get a free t-shirt if I ever do get one. Um, that's a long and distinguished list. There's a lot of good builders out there. Um, in fact, you know, there's, there's a lot of good stock appearing builders out there when it comes to like the akra nka you know you got you got a, a a good list of people to choose from pretty much all around the country um those are the people that specialize in nka akra stuff or, or are more defined um they kind of specialize in that and do modified stuff on the side then you got people that are modified builders and like the man i was talking about earlier um george owenby um I don't think he does too much with the Hemi and Predators, but animals, flatheads, opens, he's who I go to <laughs> with the with the 14.5, like the, the big O engines, the open flatheads. If I got questions, he's the one I call. Um, but, um, you know, uh, I got engines, you know, stock appearings that, that went all over the place. I had one that won this weekend in Louisiana at the Bayou Bash, that indoor race. Um, he... Uh, Anthony Meek, Keith Meek, he was up here a while ago. Um, he's won a lot of races on, on my uh, stock appearings. But a lot of good stock appearing builders out there. Uh, Barry Young's a good one. You know, he builds really good stock appearing stuff. Um, but you know, a lot of good people out there. Scott McCollum, he's up here. Um, he's a good stock appearing builder. Um, even though he's lying, so he's up here learning from me. He ain't learning jack. He's just bored and ain't got nothing else to do. But Scott McCollum is a good stock appearing builder. Um, roll tide. Y'all get out of here with that roll tide crap. <laughs> I'll be glad when football season gets here. All right, well, I've kind of scrolled through some of those questions. Anything else? I know that, like I said, I went over stuff kind of quick, like I always do, so that I can run my mouth, which is what I'm best at doing. Um, but check your, your clearances. That is a, that, that's part of building. You know, people kind of get offended, 
you know, when I say that to them, you know, well, I ask them, you know, what's your, what's your clearances here? What's that? Well, I don't know. Well, that's part of building. Um, if you're going to call yourself a builder, you got to kind of, kind of know this stuff. I mean, you don't have to do it right, you know, exact, you know, to the science and, you know, the way everybody says, oh, it should be done this way. If you're doing it another way, if you do it with the clay, you do it the way I do it. Um, I know people that, you know, they'll put the engine together and put a screwdriver underneath the rocker arms and rotate the engine, you know, with a piston at the top and just pick the rocker arms up and down. If they don't feel it hit, it's good to go. And they win a lot of races. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you're understanding that you've got sufficient clearance. Um, but like this engine right here, this engine here would not last long. It would fire up and run probably a few seconds and break the valve in it because it's hitting the head with, with nothing done to it because the head's been cut down so much. And I get these people that call me up with these Hemi heads and they cut, I cut 60 off of it and run a 10,000 gasket, you know, with a 356 cam with one-to-one -one rockers. Um, and it blew up on me, you know, then, you know, the rocker broke on me, you know, and, or the valve broke, the keeper come out, I'm like, no, it, it done its job, it just wasn't installed right, you know, you, you didn't check your clearances, you know, there's certain things you have to do when putting these engines together, that's why people get paid to do it, that's been doing it for a long time, that know this stuff, and stuff breaks, I understand that, stuff's gonna break, nothing lasts forever, stuff breaks. Um, but putting stuff together right, going through the proper clearances, and there's really no excuse for stuff like that happening too much anymore because of the internet. Not just because of my videos, but there's a lot of other people that do videos. Um, heck, Eric Voss was up here a while ago. He's done videos. You know, he's that's another one. If you want a stock appearing engine, you know, stock engine, AKRA stock appearing, Eric Voss, you know, he'll, he'll build as good as anybody out there. And got some real good cams for NKA, just to let y'all know. Y'all looking for a good NKA cam? That EV6, I've used it several times. That's a good cam. Real good cam. It is up there with the, the best the best I've used so far. But, um, you know, these people have spent the time and, 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 and learned and now are sharing their information like I'm doing here. Um, so there's not much of an excuse of, I didn't know that. Okay? I just started this. Not real big on the internet, I understand. I get people call up all the time and say, I've watched all your videos, or I've watched, you know, all of this other guy's videos, or I've watched Eric's videos, and they tell me what they've done, and I'm like, if you watched it, you had it on in the background while you're doing something else, because the video i done last week was exactly over what you done wrong here, you know, and, um, but, you know, watch listen to people you know call people up you know i'm nowhere near the best in this business i don't even consider myself average i've just got a lot of good people around me and i got a lot of good people i can lean on and that i've listened to and worked with over the years you know and i'm just full of stuff but i like to share my stuff you know because i didn't have this you know when i was learning how to do it you know, i had to learn on my own but um you know, checking clearances, checking torque specs, uh, you know, checking in play, you know, checking, you know, uh, the rolling the cam, checking center lines, all that is part of building. Um, and piston the head clearance is the easiest thing out there to check. You know, common, you know, this and a feeler gauge. And then, you know, you don't even have to measure this. You just call ARC, call Dino Cams, call NR Racing. You know, call any cart shop and say, I need a 9,000th gasket. I need a, a 14,000th gasket. I need a 27,000th gasket. They will send you what you need. Um, go off that measurement. Go off what you're doing to fill the gauge. You've got your piss in the head. Um, that's done. Now, the valve stuff, a little more into it, but, you know, common stuff out there you can get, you know, to, to do your valve clearancing. But that's all part of building. And like I say, sometimes people get a little offended because... They call me at a bad time of the day, you know, I've, I'm, I'm ill with something else. I'm kind of, no pun intended, but short with them. <laughs> and, you know, but it's part of building. You know, we all had to go through it. We all had to learn it, but there's a lot of people out there now that is sharing their information and just get out there and, and search. But just, 
I do say tell people to be weary of these of a lot of these carding forms. You know, um, a lot of people in these forums don't like me because I say stuff like this, but it's the truth. A lot of folks on these forums, there's a lot of people that know what they're doing. Most of the people that really, really know what they're doing, they sit back in the shadows. They just watch. Um, you can contact them through these forums. Um, a lot of times they'll do like I do and respond through private message. Um, I don't get on these forums and talk a lot because every time I do, I get jumped on. You know, because everybody wants to prove me wrong. I mean, what are you doing about proving me wrong? Nothing. Um, but be weary of these forums on, 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 on who you listen to. A lot of good information out there, but there's just as much bad information out there that people are passing off, that they've heard from somebody else, they don't know themselves, they've never actually done it themselves. They just heard Billy Bob tell Joe Bob that told Pony Boy, and they're going to pass it off, and they, they, they want to look like there's somebody on these forums. Why that is, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't like being that person, believe it or not. But, um, you know, call, I'm available basically 24 hours a day, believe it or not. You send me messages, you send me stuff through Facebook, you send me stuff through Messenger, you know, I got emails, you know, a lot of these other people are the same way, they're on Facebook, you can, you can call them, you know, the information's out there. Um, you just got to actually look for it. You got to actually put in the effort and then you got to actually do what they tell you. And a lot of the stuff that we tell people, you know, they, they, I've had people actually laugh at me on the phone and call me an idiot before. It happens quite often, you know, and, um, but then they call me back a couple of days later and order more parts that they just broke because I told them to do it a certain way that Joe Bob didn't tell them to do. When, you know, I ain't never heard of doing that way. Well, this is what you got to do. This is why you're breaking stuff, you know, um, go on there and, 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 and do it like this and, and, um, it'll all be good. And, uh, but you know, the information's out there. No excuses. Shout out to Scott McCall. Well, now he out. He knows it's $50 now. You get a shout out on my show, it's $50. I wear your shirt, it's $500. <laughs> i have never done a video on Briggs V-Twin, and I probably never will. Um, that's not a really used engine um, in this area, so that's not something that I build a lot of. Um, actually, I've I've only messed with, I think, two actual V twins before, and those are on um, those uh, Bandolero cars. A long time ago. Any results with a CL four? Yep, I've got lots of results with a CL four. A CL four is a very good cam. Um, it's got a little different setup than you know, like your CL threes, you know, or your uh, the EB, you know, the Eric Voss cams or the Sox cams. Um, it's a good cam. Um, it took me a little while to figure out. You know, my jetting combination and and um, timing and stuff like that. But I've got some really good results for the CL4. Um, it, it likes it likes it likes timing. Uh, some of these some of these uh, cams, you know, like a little more timing than others. You know, you get this cam and it likes you know 36, 37 on unrestricted, and I've had some cams that liked 33. You know, and you know, play with the coil gap and stuff. But uh, yeah, the CL four is, is as good a cam as anything out there. Um, check clearances when using an adjustable cam. Uh, if you're using an adjustable cam, chances are you're building some type of modified engine, a, a pretty highly modified engine. Uh, you know, checking rod to load clearances. You know, up in there. Um, I've done a video, two or three videos ago, that showed um, how to take a side cover and cut it so that you can you can look up in there, and when you cut the side cover, it you know you just take it and you know cut it from bolt to bolt basically around the around whatever you know around the area that holds the cam and around the the uh, it's called installing the stroker kit or something like that. But it shows you how to do that and how to check for clearances inside the block. Um, adjustable cams usually have pretty good lobes on them. Um, see, the beauty of adjustable cams, though, is you can get smaller base circle cams made that the base circle is smaller so that it, it, it actually moves, it, it tightens up that circle in there for strokers or, or um, you know, higher, higher lift lobes and stuff like that. So if you get an adjustable cam from either Dyno or Precision, you know, or um, ISKI, 
you know, talk to them about small base circle cams because those help a lot when it comes to clearancing. Um, thought of used motor or cut head. Um, it's hard. It's hard to tell how much has actually been cut off of a head. Um, you know, the clone heads they come pretty consistent as far as the shelf on them, and oh, my putty stuck to it. Um, like the shelf right here. The area that the gasket they they come pretty consistent but i've seen some of these hemis they actually have you know 10 12 15 thousandths difference in them um, but just get another head you know and, and and measure it you can use field gauges sit it beside it and measure it and kind of get a rough guesstimate on how much has been cut off of it um you know i i would do it with this you know measure between the valves i've got notes on hundreds of heads that i've measured factory heads right off the engine you know and I'll, I'll use you know this this instrument here to you know measure down in between the valve and that tells me how deep it is you know i've got a whole notebook full of stuff like that that you know certain number heads and all and and but with hemi heads they, they they're really inconsistent i've had a lot of the center right in here between the valves on the hemi be some of it be flat and some of it be kind of concave so it gives me a false reading on it okay that's why i stay so quiet i know you're talking about a a forum i've seen you on forums before Folks talking against themselves. So, all right, well, um, timing and jetting. Not sure what question you was asking there. Um, cut the block deck to zero. It messes with timing. Well, yeah, in a way, it does. Um, all right, where are we at here? Um. If you take your measurements, a lot of people measure their timing with what's called, you know, firing in the hole. Um, they'll, a lot of times they use this gauge here, you know, that I, this is kind of what this was for, you know, and, and, you know, they'll put it on the block and they'll measure, they'll zero it out here on the block and turn it down on the piston and measure in the hole, you know, 230,000, 250,000, 280,000, and that's where they set their flywheel at to fire. Um, you know, off this magnet over here, you know, it's called firing in the hole. That's that's an old flip, the way we used to do it on the flatheads, you know, back in the day, and I, I still do it on these some. That's actually what I use this for, um, for in the hole. But if you've got an engine that you set the timing on, and then you cut the block, which you know, you'd have to take the engine apart anyway. Um, yeah, it, it would throw the timing off a little bit because that's that's moving the piston up in the hole. Um, but you know, if you've got an engine that you've got set, like I say, you got to take the engine apart to cut the head. Then you got to put it back together and retime it. So technically, it's still timed the same. But if you've got this engine here, let's say I got the engine. You know, this engine is ten in the hole, and I set it at two hundred fifty to fire in the hole. And then I leave the piston in it and I cut 10 thousandths off for zero. That's moved the piston up to 240 and it has lowered the timing a little bit. Um, but like I said, you got to take the engine apart to do all that. And when you put it back together, you retime it so it's in the same place. Your piston's just at zero. But if you cut it with the piston still on the hole and don't move the flywheel, yes, it will affect the timing slightly. Uh, I got jigs that'll. I can deck blocks to whatever you want. Um, I just don't. Um, I like, I typically like leaving my piston around no less than five if I can help it, um, to 10 in the hole, five to 10 in the hole on my stalkers. Uh, modifieds, you know, I'm, I like to keep them at no, no less than 10. Um, I've got, I've got some modifieds out there that's like 25 in the hole. Um, that I've, you know, I cut the head down flat and then them suckers will roll. Um, but you can get your compression, your CCs where you want by cutting your head, you know, in different thicknesses of head gaskets. Um, 
I've just never been a fan of zero deck because you have to run thicker head gaskets. Um, I like to run one to two head gaskets at the most. Um, now on plate engines, like I've, I've done some videos in the past where I like to run, you know, one or two of the metal gaskets on AKRA adult engines, but plate engines, especially red plates and green plates, I'll cut the head down even more and run one of the 40,000s head gaskets. Um, because in theory, you got to cut the head more that brings the valves closer to the, to the bottom of the, of the head kind of unshrouds them it kind of messes with the fuel signal a little bit you can gain a little bit of fuel signal by doing that um by running a thicker head gasket and cutting the head more still keeping your cc's you know around you know 26 8 to 27 cc's um it will give you a little more fuel signal there it's slight but i have seen gains on the dyno with it now i haven't seen as many gains on adult engines like uh, black, i treat a blue plate just like i do an adult engine now purple is kind of in an area of its own but greens and reds Typically, I cut them, I cut the heads more, run these thicker head gaskets, and I have seen gains on those engines where I haven't seen them as much on the adults. So I still stick to one or two with them. Don't know how I got off on that. Um, oh, decking the block to zero. That's right. Uh, suggested time for CL4, unrestricted. The ones I've done they liked 36 to 37. I've rarely gone over 36 degrees on the adult engines, um, but the one that's in my shop now is back for a rebuild. Um, it's got a, it's one of the first CO4s I did. Real good engine. Had a real good torque curve on it. Um, it flattened out. You know, it peaked around 61 and a half and basically only lost like two tenths to 69. Real good engine. Um, and it's on 37 degrees, and it's got a 75 thousandths coil gap on it. Um, you know, but like I said, the CO4 from my setups, the way I set my carbs and all up, they like 36 and 37. Um, other cams I air, um, like I was talking about the Eric Voss cam a while ago, it likes around 35, you know, with about a, about a 50 to 60 thousandths coil gap on it. Um, but... You know, typically I'd start at 36 for that CL4 and just kind of go from there. Piston skirt clearance do I run? Depends on the engine. Um, stalkers, AKRA stalkers, I shoot for between four and four and a half on new builds. Um, rebuilds on stalkers, AKRAs, uh, once I get past about five and a half thousandths piston clearance, I'll go up to the next size. Modifieds, um, I start out um, between four and a half and five with three ring pistons. Now, if I'm running the two ring pistons, like the two ring wise codes with the long rod where you gotta cut the piston or a stroker, I tend to try to stay around three and a half on new builds. And once I get over four and a half, I go to the next size. Um, because those pistons, um, the, the two ring pistons, the rings are at the very top. The wrist pin's really close to the top. You get a lot of rock in it um, because of the way it's built. And you get past five, five and a half, six thousand. I know people that run that. You tend to get a little bit of uh, skirt slop, and you get accelerated wear. You see, you know, the lines start forming in your piston, and, and <clears throat> the, the, the covering coming off of it. You know, but new builds, three ring pistons. I try to shoot between four and five. Wise codes with the two ring, um, I try to shoot for around three and a half, three to three and a half. But mm. big block with a forty thousandths long rod and it's still twenty in the hole. That's perfect. I'd leave it right there. Uh, I wouldn't deck the block. That's just me. I'd cut the head some more if you look for more compression. But then again. With a big block, the valves are angled just, they're not angled as much as a Hemi, um, but like an actual genuine Honda, the valves are angled a little bit. Um, so you got to really watch your piston to valve clearance um, if you're running a high lift cam. Um, like in my uh, 460 uh, Unlimited All Star engine, I'm running one of the uh, Bullfrog dome pistons, pop up pistons in it, and it had valve reliefs cut in it. And I'm around 100 thousandths on each side, but I'm running. 
I want to say 550 or 60 thousandths lift on that thing. Um, it, uh, but I'm still around 100 thousandths on it. So I, 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 instead of cutting the head, I've done some welding on it to get my compression where I want it. So just be, uh, be wary of that if you're running, you know, a higher lift cam. If you're running over 400 lift, especially if you got bigger valves, I'm running a 38 in mine. If you're running a 38 or a 40, just be wary of that about the piston to valve contact. Um, and if you need more compression instead of cutting the head, you can uh, you can weld the head up. If you run a huge coil gap, it will smoke the coal negative. That's the opposite. Um, some of these red plate engines, red plates and green plates, um, I'm running anywhere from 38 to 41 degrees timing in them. And I stick screwdrivers underneath the coil and jack it as high as it'll go. I mean, I shove screwdrivers under it, pick them up. I don't even know what it measures. I've, I've never measured it. I just jack it as high as it'll go and tighten it down. Um, what that's going to do when you jack that coil up like that, now our flywheels are unique because you can actually use, I got a video on this too. I'm going to get a shirt made that says that I got a video on this and I'm going to start wearing it everywhere I go. But the uni uniqueness of our flywheels is you can actually use a coil gap to tune the engine. It's a fine tune. You're not going to move the coal and find a horsepower. It just ain't going to happen. Um, but with these, the magnets in them are so strong that you can move the coal up and it's going to affect how the, the, the timing retards through the mid range and the high RPMs because all these OEM ignitions, they will retard the higher the RPMs you go because they're not designed to turn this kind of RPM. And a PBL ignition, wherever you set it, it stays all the way up to 12,000, but we're talking OEM coals. Um, typically on my unrestricted AKRA style engines, I'm running anywhere from a 65 to a 75 thousandth gap. Um, and the, the smaller the plate goes, the more timing I put in it and the bigger the gap I pull up. Especially with the reds and the green, I jack it all the way up and run 38, 39, 40 degrees timing. And the reason I'm jacking it up is that reduces magnet drag. Um, the further you get it away, the less that magnet is being drawn to that coil it's still giving it power still gives it plenty of power um but it's 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 just like you take a magnet the closer you pull it to something the harder it's going to pull you get it up that takes drag off that flywheel which is going to give you it's going to it's not going to make more power but it's not going to have power robbed from you because that magnet is holding it back just the same thing with one of this is our speedway flywheel this is the flywheel we released you know late last year early this year you know, it's got a lower uh, uh, drag on the on, on the fins. It moves plenty of air, but it's got less drag on it. It's not making more power. It's freeing up more power. Because uh, when the drag is on this flywheel, it drags it down. It's like letting the air out of your tire. You're going to get roll resistance. You put more air in your tire, you get less roll resistance. It's, it's kind of how that works. You got, you move enough air to cool the engine, but it's got less drag on it. It's freeing up power. Um, especially in the mid to upper RPM range. That's what raising that coil up on small plate engines does is it reduces magnet drag. Uh, yeah, you can change the piston and get a different, well, I wouldn't really get a different compression half, but I'd get a different, you know, dome or you can weld the head up. Um, yada, 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 yada. Ryan, are you asking me the coil gap on my big block? Um, I'm running the PBL ignition on my big block, both of them. I got a, a stroke 390 with our stroke crank in, and I got a 460 with our billet crank in it also. I'm running the PBL ignition on both of them, and I think I'm at 45 thousandths. The coil gap doesn't affect the PBL ignition like it does this. Um, in fact, that, what he said before about jacking the coil up, will hurt a PBL coil if you get it up around 60, 70, 80 thousands. It'll still read, but it's going to mess up the, the digital stuff that's in it, and it could burn the coil up. Um, I usually run the PBLs around 40 to 45 thousands. Uh, are there any cons to cutting the fins off the flywheel? Other than uh, voiding the SFI um, rating on the flywheel, um, cutting the fins off of it, um, lowers drag. That's why we make the, the, uh, little drag flywheels with no fins on it, or we make the ultralight flywheel that you can have the plastic fins and, and bolt them on. Um, but you take those fins off and that reduces, takes air drag away. 
Um, another example, a boat paddle. Um, think of the fins on that flywheel like a boat paddle. You got a good wide boat paddle, you put it in the water, you get a lot of resistance. You turn that, that paddle sideways, it cuts through the water like a knife. Same thing with the air. You take the fin away, you take air drag away. Now, if you're running a methanol engine, uh, Tilliston, Big McCoonie, Big 390, even stock appearing, um, I don't run fins on the flywheel. Um, I either run the ultralight with no fins or I run the 6603. Um, or, you know, we made some flywheels here a while back, you know, with no fins on them, but we decided not to put those in production. Um, but cutting the fins off and methanol engines will free up power. Now, cutting them off with gasoline engines, um, you can have a big con because it's going to overheat. Those gasoline burns hotter than methanol. You have problems with valves hitting because you run car valves in your engine. I assume you're talking to me. I just, I cut them down first. Yeah. Sometimes. Alrighty then. Um, well, I think I've kind of chattered enough here. Um, but there again, back to the original uh, opening question or opening problem or opening topic. Piston to valve clearance. Very, very important to hemi head. Um, you've got several ways to do it. Like I say, when we started off, we got the putty, um, which is the most common way of doing it, or with the gauges like I do. Um, I just feel that the gauges are more accurate. Sometimes it, it may take a little longer because the putty, all you do, you spread it out on the piston, put it on, torque the head down, uh, put your valve train on, set it to zero lash, rotate the engine two or three times, and it will leave you a nice little indent. In the, in the in the putty um, but when it comes to the hemi head that's the reason I showed you the gauges is that putty you know you'll when you get that putty spread out on top of that piston you know that that valve you know can actually like I say the way it goes down at an angle it's gonna push that putty to one side and then when it comes back up that hole can close up a little bit and 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 throw your reading off um that's I run into this firsthand. You know, I've, I've experienced it firsthand. That's why I've wanted to do this. But um, it uh, it's, it's, it's and the more the valves are angled, the bigger problem you have. Like the new Ducar engine, the 212 Ducar that Dino's got. Great engine, but the valves are actually angled more on that engine than they are on the Predator Hemi. So if you go to a bigger valve in it, you know it's going to take up. You know, it comes with a 27 valve in it. And it comes, I believe, one side or the other, the piston's already fly cut and got valve release in it. Um, so if you run that head and you put a 28 or a 30 in it, you've really got to got to watch your clearances or either cut your piston really deep. And if you cut them more than about 50 thousandths, um, you know, some pistons you can't cut. Um, like if you're running a stroker kit, you've got to, most of the stroker kit rods that we sell, you got to cut the piston down. Um, we do sell a rod that you don't have to cut it. But that piston that we sell on it is thin at the top also, so you gotta really watch how you cut it because when you cut those valve release in there, it actually weakens the piston. And if high RPMs cause that thing to flex, it could cause it to break over time. So um, the Hemi head's a really, really good head for modified, really make a lot of power, but it's a builder's head and there's a lot of work that goes into it to, uh, to make it right. Um, I think I have scroll through all these questions any more questions any more concerns any more comments any more smart ass remarks whatever <laughs> um dick's gonna wrap it up if they're it um again uh no mr williams it does not have gatorade in it um i'm not allowed to say what's in it but it's it's not gatorade I don't drink Gatorade anyway because I am a Florida State fan. We drink Powerade. Um, we don't do anything with Gators except beat them. But uh, anyway, um, 800 number, of five, uh, 800-521-3560. Um, email us at, you know, Jody at ARC Racing, sales at ARC Racing, customer service at ARC Racing, um, you know, um, 
through Facebook, um, Messenger. You can, um, you know, you can get a hold of me pretty much many ways. Um, not saying I'm gonna jump right on it. Um, because I average, especially on the weekends during racing season, I average a lot, a lot of questions. And some weekends I'll get over a hundred, you know, questions just, you know, on a weekend. And I do my best to answer them all. Um, I can't promise I'll get to it in a super timely matter, but I do my best to get to it as quick as I can. I have some people that they just can't fathom that I've answered more than just their question. They message me back, where are you at, you know, yada, yada. Anyway, message me, I will get to it quick as I can. And um, call us up at the shop if I'm available, which that's kind of hard to get sometimes too. Um, you know, we can talk about whatever you need, go over whatever you want. If I know the answer, I'll tell you. If not, I will give you the direction to go to get that answer. But anyway, um, fixing a sign off, roll tide. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Uh, well, I appreciate everybody stopping by tonight. Um, hope I didn't blabber on too much. Hope I kind of um, answered the questions and the reasons why I do the gauge thing instead of the putty thing. But appreciate everybody stopping by, and I'm going to try try to do at least once a month. I know I say that every video, but, you know, life gets in the way. And, you know, between the stuff I do with ARC and my personal engine building business and trying to race at the same time and have a family it kind of gets overwhelming um so i put them off a little bit but I, i'm really going to try to keep up my once a month thing um but if not may see y'all at a track sometime soon because i'm planning on doing more racing this summer but uh thanks again for stopping by and um we'll see y'all next time see ya